Saturday, August 27, criminal charges for murder, attempted murder, violations of the arms law, and resistance or obstruction of justice, were filed, in the court of San Juan, against Joaquin Alexander Cruz Jimenez, 46, a resident of Otto Ray, for events that occurred at 11.29 p.m., in the parking area, of the T-Mobile district, of San Juan. Cruz Jimenez, inflicted a knife wound, on the body of Albi Rosa Velasquez, 34, who, at the time of the events, was working as a security guard, for the company, St. James, at T-Mobile. The victim received a stab wound, and was transported to the emergency room of a nearby hospital, the doctor on duty, certified the absence of vital signs. The case was referred to prosecutor, Angel Garcia. Judge Brenda Sala, set bail at $300,000. The accused, had been ejected from the building, and was not allowed back inside the facility, after an altercation, with other people. He was very hostile, and when they gave him the warnings, he said, I want my lawyer, and if I have to kill 40 more, I'll kill them. The investigator reported. A video of the attack will follow. Viewer discretion is advised. Wednesday, August 31st, Venezuelan banker, Julio Martín Herrera V. Ludini, surrendered to federal authorities, in Puerto Rico, where he faces charges, as a co-defendant, in relation to the corruption case, against former Governor Juan de Vázquez Garcet. According to the indictment, beginning in 2019, Banco Credito Bank, was under audit, by the Puerto Rico Office of the Commissioner of Financial Institutions, through intermediaries. The banker and his consultant, Mark Rossini, allegedly promised to provide funds, to support the governor's 2020 gubernatorial campaign, in exchange, for the governor firing the OCIF commissioner, and appointing a new commissioner, of the banker's choosing. The former assistant to Governor Vasquez, John Blakeman, and former president of Banco Credito, Francis Diaz, had pled guilty to participating in the bribery scheme. August 31st, the Puerto Rico police are investigating a murder, that occurred on Wednesday night, on 1st Street, of the Villas del Sol neighborhood, in Truillo Alto. According to the police report, a call through the 911 emergency system, alerted authorities at 10.23 p.m., about gunshots, in the area. When the agents arrived at the scene, they found a white Nissan vehicle, with several bullet holes, and inside, the bullet-ridden body of a man. Paramedics arrived at the scene, and certified the absence of vital signs. The deceased, who at the moment has not been identified, was described as having a dark complexion, black hair, brown eyes, and an approximate height of 5 feet 8 inches. In addition, he had a tattoo, in the form of lips, on his neck, and two roses, on his chest. At the time of the crime, the victim was wearing a white long-sleeved shirt, black pants, black sports shoes, white socks, and black gloves. Sunday, August 28th, the police bureau identified a man, who was murdered, at dawn, in events that occurred on the PR-52 expressway, near a factory in Juana Diaz, Puerto Rico. The deceased was identified by relatives, as Luis Reynaldo Torres Cruz, 34 years old. The events were recorded at 2.18 a.m., near the Cooper Vision factory. A call to the 911 emergency system, alerted police to shots fired. A white Nissan vehicle was located at the scene, and the body of a man, with multiple gunshot wounds, was found inside. The car was in the median area that divides the lanes. The road remained closed while the scene investigation was carried out. The police reported, that Torres Cruz, had a criminal record, between 2000, and 2011. Sunday, August 28, a 32-year-old man was shot to death, this Sunday afternoon, in the Tamarindo neighborhood, in Ponce, police reported. 
A call from a hospital, to the Ponce Police Precinct, alerted authorities, that a man with several gunshot wounds, was transported to the emergency room, and later died. At the moment, the victim has not been identified. The Homicide Division of the Criminal Investigation Corps, of the Ponce area, and the prosecutor on duty, will take charge of the investigation. 30 August 25th, the Criminal Investigation Corps, of the police in Arecibo, identified Joanna Rosalie Plaravera, 52, the 12th woman murdered, so far this year, in an incident of domestic violence. This occurred in the Cacao de Cabradillas neighborhood, of Arecibo, Puerto Rico. The victim was shot to death by Norberto Estramera de Jesus, her 54-year-old ex-partner. The man arrived in Puerto Rico, the previous night, from the state of Wisconsin, in the United States, and allegedly stalked the victim, and then shot her multiple times. After committing the crime, the man killed himself. The incident was reported at around 6.50 a.m., this past Thursday. A call to the 911 emergency system by neighbors, reported hearing an argument, and later, several shots. The victim, was preparing to leave her house, to exercise, when she was surprised by her assailant. At the scene, the officer reported, they seized four firearms, two shotguns, a rifle, and the murder weapon. The investigator stated, that the events occurred in the presence of the woman's two daughters. After having murdered the mother, one of the daughters, tried to stop the man from taking his own life, begging don't do that, as he pointed the gun to his head. Then, the man, allegedly, put the firearm to the victim's daughter's head, and ordered her to move, and she complied. Later, according to the investigator, Estramera de Jesus, took his own life. Of the 33 women murdered, so far this year, one of them was a minor. In contrast, some 20 women had been murdered, on the same date, last year. Both the police, and the Office of the Women's Ombudsman, have tools to confidentially address, any indication, or complaint, about a pattern of abuse, mistreatment, or situation, of domestic violence. If you are, or know a person, who is experiencing a similar pattern, you can contact the police at, 787-792-6734 or Women's Ombudsman at, 787-722-2977. Wednesday, August 31st, agents from the Arrests and Searches Division, arrested a 31-year-old man, who was listed as one of the most wanted, in the Mayaguez area. Jorge Ibanez Palermo, a resident of Cabo Rojo, is accused of attempted murder, violation of domestic violence, and weapons laws. According to a police report, the events date back to June, when, Ibanez Palermo, attacked his partner, with a hammer, and in August, he was accused of attacking his partner, with a machete. Bail was set at $950,000. Thursday, September 1st, the Homicide Division of the Criminal Investigations Corps, of Mayaguez, awaits the results of the analysis, of a series of fingerprints, that could identify one, or more people, related to the murder, of Richard Jose Vega Lugo, a veteran of the United States Armed Forces, who was shot, on August 11th. The 42-year-old postman, was wrapped in a sheet, and thrown under a bridge, near the El Seco neighborhood. The police confirmed, that citizens reported an incident at 2.50 a.m., where shots were heard. The agents who responded to the alert, found multiple shell casings, in front of Building 17, of the residential complex, as well as a black Jeep Grand Cherokee SUV, owned by the victim, which received several bullet impacts. September 1st, Arecibo, the Puerto Rico Police Bureau, achieved the arrest of Jonathan Serrano Martinez, alias Panda, the leader of a criminal organization, to which violent crimes, drug sales, and arms trafficking, are attributed, in the area of Arecibo, Puerto Rico. According to the police, while a team of agents raided the Panda hideout, simultaneously, two other teams, did the same, in the separate residence, of the arsenal manager and financial manager. The authorities seized various firearms, including a rifle, a Glock pistol modified to fire automatically, various magazines and ammunition. 
In addition, they seized paraphernalia, cocaine, marijuana, a bulletproof vest with the initials of the DEA, and a jacket, with a forged police symbol. In the second raid, Alex Gonzalez Moreno, 48, was arrested, considered as the banker, with a large number of pills and approximately 15,000 in cash. In the third raid, Joel Arnaldo Rivera Olmo, 38, the gunsmith, was arrested with four rifles, four shotguns, two pistols, a Nuzi, and a revolver. Tuesday, August 30th, the businessman, Jose Bu Santiago, pleaded guilty, this past Tuesday, in the federal court, in Otto Ray, for conspiring to bribe the former mayor of Catania, Felix Delgado, in exchange for contracts in the municipality. Approached about his crime, the 50-year-old man pronounced himself, guilty, with a hoarse, and low voice, almost whispering. According to the criminal complaint, in April 2019, the businessman met at the former mayor's house, where he gave him the bribe, in exchange for awarding contracts, to his company, for construction, maintenance of green areas, purchase, and rental of vehicles, as opportunities arose. December 3, 2021, the former Catano mayor, Felix Delgado, pleaded guilty to conspiracy to commit bribery, and receive kickbacks, for awarding 50 contracts, worth nearly $10 million, to an asphalt company. He faces a maximum of five years in prison. Wednesday, August 31st, the former mayor of Yauco, Abel Nazario, informed the federal court, that he reached an agreement, in principle, with the federal prosecutor's office, to plead guilty. He indicated that the public ministry provided a proposed plea agreement. The motion does not specify if the guilty plea will be for the charge of theft, or bribery, related to programs with federal funds, or if there would be any modification, in the indictment. Nazario Quinones, and seven other people, were indicted by a federal grand jury, which issued arrest warrants, that were executed by the Federal Bureau of Investigation, on November 6, 2019. Four of the defendants, had pled guilty. Among the charges, it is alleged that, the former mayor, paid employees, and administrative personnel, with the municipality's funds, to work on his senatorial campaign. The defendants face a maximum of 10 years in prison, and a fine, not to exceed $250,000. After a string of blackouts, that left many without electricity, throughout August, Puerto Ricans came together to protest, Luma Energy, and Governor Pedro Pierluisi, in San Juan. Some protests ended with the streets thick with tear gas, and multiple journalists and protesters, arrested by police. More than a thousand protesters showed up in San Juan, this week, to protest Luma Energy, the public-private American-Canadian company, that controls the distribution, and maintenance of energy. Activist, and stuntman, Alberto de Jesus Mercado, better known as, Tito Kayak, told the crowd he was going to cross the police barricade, and get himself peacefully arrested. When he crossed, he was taken down by three police officers. Carlos Adil Barrios Polanco, an independent journalist, and regular contributor for Latino Rebels, crouches in pain, above, after being sprayed in the face, by police, while covering a protest in San Juan, Puerto Rico, August 25, 2022. The Puerto Rican urban music superstar, Bad Bunny reaches one of the most significant achievements of his career, by becoming the first Latin artist, and the first non-English language performer, to win MTV's, Artist of the Year Award. Bad Bunny remotely accepted the Artist of the Year Award, at the MTV Video Music Awards, at the Prudential Center, on Sunday August 28, in Newark, New Jersey. Thanks for watching. Here's your weather for the week. Follow us on Facebook for up-to-date news, weather, business, entertainment, tourism and more. Search Puerto Rico English News, or follow the link in the description. Find us on Twitter at PR English News. Thanks for subscribing. Have an amazing week.